Hello ladies and gentlemen. In this exercise you can learn to program particle systems for a snowfall effect. And this will give you insight into how we use tiny little graphics or sprites with randomized motion to create some kind of greater effect. You can create particle systems for smoke, fire, rain, animated star fields, snow, and a ton of other things. Before we learn the code at work, let's take a look at the finished product of the snowfall effect. Now when you run this on your system, it'll look a lot smoother, and it might look a little bit choppy because of the frame rate of my recorded tutorial video. Now you can see what we're doing is making a particle effect out of little tiny shapes, and I programmed it in such a way to where the circles that are in are closer to us or look to appear to be closer to us or a little bit bigger and they're flowing down faster. Okay you can see I'm starting out with an empty black canvas and there's nothing going on on it yet and all I have is an animate function which we discussed in earlier lessons. Now first thing I'm going to do is add a background image for my snowy scene. So I'll say var bg is equal to new image object instance and then I'll make the bg.source equal to the image that I want to use and it has dimensions of 700 by 350 the same exact dimensions as my canvas so it fills the entire canvas background now in my animate function I'm just gonna type in ctx.draw image and then we'll place the parameters that we need the image resource which mine is called bg then we need the X and Y, so I'll put 0 and 0 since my image is the same exact size as the canvas. We'll put it starting in the top left corner. Now if we run this in our favorite browser, we get our background image for our snowy scene. And by the way, if you want to know how to make a snowy scene just like this, I have fireworks tutorials where I show how to make really cool Christmas scenes and stuff like that where there's stars and aurora lights and the moon and Santa flying and all kind of cool stuff. So check out some of the fireworks tutorials if you want to learn how to create these graphics for your backgrounds. Or you can programmatically create your graphics on the canvas which is a little more tough, probably faster in the workflow just to go into a graphics editor and make your background. Now we're going to go right under where we're getting our canvas width and canvas height variables and we're going to put another variable called flakes and this is going to represent an empty array at first but using a little bit of loop action we're gonna pack that array with a whole bunch of little snowflake objects so for this basic example I'm just gonna use two functions I'll have function add flake and I also want function snow so now I'll go down into my animate function and right under where I'm drawing the image I'm gonna call the snow function to execute so that's gonna execute many 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 times per second and the snow function is actually going to call the add flake function. So what I'm going to do is inside of the snow function, every time it executes, so is the add flake function. Now within the add flake function, we're going to need three variables, and then we're going to push a new little snowflake object into the flakes array. So we'll have var x, var y, and var s. And S you can think of either as speed or size. You tell me. It depends on how you want to look at it. So for the X position for each little snowflake that's going to fall, we want to make sure that it starts up above the canvas or it comes in at the very top of the canvas and it's at a random position along the horizontal plane. We don't want them all falling from the same X position. We want them falling from random X positions. So x is going to be equal to math.random times the canvas width. Now what we're going to do is wrap that in math.floor to round it down. Math.floor will round that down so there's no decimal, resulting decimal number. It'll be a rounded number. And then out here we say plus 1. Now that gives us a random number between 1 and the canvas width. So our canvas width in this case is 700. So the little particle, which is our snowflake, is going to fall at a random x position between 1 and the canvas width, between 1 and 700. Then for the y position, that's just going to be equal to 0, or you can make it equal to minus 10 if you want them to start a little bit above the top border of the canvas. I'm just going to start them exactly at the top border of the canvas. 
but you can set that at like minus 50 or minus 10 whatever you want now for the s we can take this value here which is a random number between 1 and 700 in this case and we're going to make a random number between 1 and 3 that gives me three layers if I wanted like five layers or even more to my particle effect system or my snowfall system I can raise this number a little bit if I put this on a 2 it'll only appear like there's two layers of depth to the particle system so I'm gonna put it on 3 so my particle system has three layers of depth and we only need one semicolon there now finally we're gonna push a little snowflake object into the flakes array so we say flakes dot push and the value for the push method is going to be a little JSON data object or some of you guys might recognize it as an associative array so the first property is going to be X then we put the colon and then the X value the X variable which is a random number between 1 and 700 then we're gonna put the Y property for this little object colon and then the Y variable for the value then the last property we want is the S and that represents speed or size depending on how you want to look at it and I'll show you what I mean about that in just a moment okay so now every time your snow function is called to run the add flake function is also going to run pushing a new little flake object a new little snowflake into the flakes array and it's gonna have a lot of random values going on so they're not all dumping in one place now all we have to do within our snow function is loop over the flakes array so we're going to set up a loop that's going to run over the length of the flakes array this will make all the little snowflakes animate down the screen well actually we're going to be adjusting the Y value to make them animate down the screen within this for loop the first thing I'm going to do in the loop is set a fill style and I'm using RGBA that way I can have a white shape that has some opacity to it I made them a little bit opaque because sometimes your snowflakes you might want to have a little bit of opacity in your snowflakes or transparency so you can set that between 1 and 0 if you put it at 0.5 you'll have half transparency now the next line I'm going to ctx dot begin path we're gonna run the begin path method because we're going to start a new arc shape for each little snowflake so under begin path we type in ctx dot arc and to create an arc we need an x parameter a y position parameter here I'll just put a little note to show us the parameters right above it so arc gets x y radius start angle end angle and anti-clockwise so we can access each flake as it comes pouring through the loop by the i variable index so for the x position we just say flake and we put i in the brackets and we say dot x position for that particular flake then we give it a comma and we're going to do the same thing for the y position. So we'll say flake dot y. Then I'm going to add to that plus equals flakes dot s, which is speed. Or you can think of that as speed. You can think of that as which layer it's on. Or you can think of that as size. It really, it's all up to way, the way you want to wrap your head around it. And the reason why we're going to add the randomized s value plus equal to the Y position is so we get the downward animated movement now what I'm also going to do is add times 0.5 to cut that number in half so you take the flakes dot s whatever that value is and you're going to cut it in half and that completes your Y value now we need the radius of the arc which is the size of it so we're going to take this right here that same value we're going to use that for the size of the snowflake. And remember, that's, the S is one of those randomized values between 1 and 3. Now put a comma. We need a start angle, end angle, and anti-clockwise. So the start angle is going to be 0. The end angle is going to be math.pi times 2, which gives us a perfect little circle. And for the anti-clockwise parameter, I'm going to put false. Okay, so now we can remove this little note. So after we establish the arc, then we say ctx.fill method to actually place the arc to fill it to the canvas.
But at that point, you have your snowflakes falling. But I'm going to put one more little bit of logic, which is a condition statement, that's going to remove any snowflakes if they happen to get past the bottom of the canvas and they're out of visible space so we don't have to manage them and render them anymore hogging up memory. Make sure we run flakes.splice on any flakes that y position becomes greater than the canvas height. So if the flakes.y position is greater than the canvas height, that flake is going to be removed by splicing it out of the flakes array. And for developer purposes, right under that I'm just going to write into the status element on the page the snowflake count. I'm going to keep track of how many snowflakes are within my flakes array or I want to see that value. So if you want to see that value you can run a line something like this and you just have to make sure that you have a status element down in your page under your canvas. So I have an h1 with ID of status. That's how I get that. And running all of that together gives us this. And we're not getting any snowflakes. Oh, this says flake. This has to say flakes. Sorry about that. Just make sure all the references for your flakes array says flakes and not flake like like I put it there. Now if we run this in our favorite browser, there we go. So we got a little snowflake count running down here. You can see as they leave the canvas, they're getting removed and new snowflakes keep pouring in from the top and it just keeps running that way. Now a really simple way to make that thicker if you want a lot more snow coming down, you can just go here where you're saying add flake and just add two flakes at a time. And then you'll see you have a much higher density of snowflakes. What if I did it four times? We get a whole ton of snowflakes in our particle system. All right, now let's grab all the code, highlight all that code. I'm going to collapse it in the add flake and the snow functions. I'm going to collapse those, bring this animate function up a little bit. And now what I'm going to do is go into right in between the draw image and snow. I'm going to rotate the canvas to make it look like my snow is coming in at an angle. Maybe it's a blizzard and it's blowing in from the side. So I'll say ctx.rotate. I'm going to rotate the entire perspective of the canvas. And if you put that on zero, you'll get no rotation. And I'm going to open up my ctx.save and ctx.restore since I'm using a uh, method that's going to manipulate the perspective of the canvas. I want to make sure that I save and restore the last layer in the animation stack. So if you run that with zero rotation, you'll see that it's the same effect that you had before. They're coming straight down. But now if I change that to something like negative 0.4 and then I run it, you'll see that I now have a sideways motion. Or it's coming down diagonal. And then what you have to do is compensate for the skewed perspective of all of that snow by making it fall deeper into the canvas, making it fall further, maybe another 200 pixels before they disappear. And you want to make sure that they come out further off to the left over here because you have a blank spot here too. So you can see that basically there's a rectangle right there that you can visibly see where the snow is falling. That's because I rotated the canvas a little bit. Now if I didn't ctx.save and restore, you can see what this looks like. It's just spinning everything around and around and around because every time this little animate function runs, we're not saving then restoring the last layer of the animation stack. So you got to make sure you ctx.save and restore if you want to do rotation effects and things like that. So if I put this on 0 0.8, it'll be a really dramatic sideways effect. So that's how you can make it look like your snow or your rain or whatever is coming in at an angle. You just have to make sure that you tweak your numbers about where your snow is falling and the boundaries for where it's if you're going to rotate it. 
but I'll just leave mine on zero for this quick example because I'm not going to spend too much time here. And we'll leave it falling straight down. Okay, so that shows you how to create a particle effect system using JavaScript on the canvas element for a snowfall effect.